Did you know that one of the best ways to save money and actually make money has to do with your health insurance? So we get asked about HSAs, which are health savings accounts, all of the time. And whether you're looking to retire early or just retire more comfortably, these can be a great wealth building tool that you may be missing out on. So I wanted to go over some of the updates for 2025. So what is an HSA? Well, as I said, an HSA is simply a health savings account. It's just a separate account with your money in it, and it can be used to save money or to even make money, which we're going to talk about later in the video. Now, HSAs have what's known as the triple tax advantage, which make them very popular with the FIRE community, financial independence, retire early, because of that triple tax advantage. So the money in an HSA is your money that you contribute. And the amount that you contribute is actually pre-tax. And that can help you in one of two ways. Number one, of course, it just lowers your taxable income, which means that when you file your taxes, you might have to pay less or possibly be eligible for a larger refund. Also, if you're somebody who uses a plan through the marketplace, remember that the marketplace is looking at your MAGI or modified adjusted gross income to determine your eligibility for those premium tax credits and how large those premium tax credits would be. So if you're able to lower your MAGI by contributing to an HSA, you may push yourself into a different bracket, making yourself eligible for a much larger premium tax credit, which can save you thousands of dollars per year. So every year, the IRS sets limits on the maximum contributions that you can make to your HSA. So in 2025, if you are filing as an individual, if you have an individual health plan, because HSAs are tied to your health plans, which we're gonna talk about, if you have an individual health plan, then you can contribute up to $4,300, which is up 150 from 2024. And if you have a family plan, you can contribute up to $8,550, which is up $250 from 2024. And then remember, if you are over 55, there's that additional $1,000 catch-up contribution that you're eligible for. So back to that triple tax advantage. So as I said, the amount that you contribute is pre-tax, therefore lowering your taxable income. Also, these HSAs are accounts that are interest-bearing, and that interest accrued is not taxable. And you can shop around for different HSAs to make sure you get the best interest rate. Now you can use your HSA in one of several ways, one of which is a wealth building tool, which we're going to talk about very soon. But really the intention of an HSA is to use it for qualified medical expenses. And as long as you withdraw the funds for a qualified medical expense, and the list is really, really long. I mean, if I were to just speak slowly and go through every single item on the screen, it would probably be a 20 minute video. If you do want the link to that list of benefits, just let me know in the comments below and I will link it for you, but the list really is very long. I mean, it even includes things like chiropractic care and over-the-counter medications. And as long as you withdraw the funds for a qualified medical expense, then there's no taxation or penalty. Now, although you can only continue to contribute to your HSA, while enrolled in the plan that offers the HSA, those funds do remain there. You're not going to lose them. So they can roll over from year to year. And if you manage to hold on to your HSA until you're 65, then you can convert it to a basic retirement account. Now, all these things are great, but they're probably not going to help you in a major financial way. However, the real key to maximizing your HSA and using it as a wealth building tool is investing because you can actually invest a certain portion of your HSA and the earnings on those investments are not taxed. So when we're talking about long-term financial goals, this is a major benefit because again, those funds roll over from year to year, you have that interest accruing and you have investments. You can make long-term investments with earnings accruing year over year. A brief pause here. If you like what you're seeing, and we hope you do, please make sure to click like and subscribe as well. It really helps us to grow our channel. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can reach us in the comments below or at the number on the screen. We are licensed health insurance brokers who are licensed nationwide, and there's absolutely no charge for our services. So if this all sounds good to you and you're ready to start your HSA, what you need to know next is how to enroll. Well, first and foremost, you need to enroll in an HDHP, which is a high deductible health plan. 
Specifically, you need to enroll in an HDHP that offers an HSA. Now, of course, not just any plan qualifies as an HDHP. Just like with your HSA contributions, every year the IRS sets a minimum deductible in order for a plan to be considered a high deductible. And in 2025, the minimum deductible for a plan to be considered a high deductible for an individual is $1,650, which is up $50 from 2024, or $3,300 for a family, which is up $100 from 2024. Now hit the brakes because those high deductibles don't actually sound so high. And that's because, again, this is the minimum deductible for a plan to be considered a high deductible. But very often, they're much higher than that. And they can actually go all the way up to the out-of-pocket maximum, which as you've guessed, is set by the IRS every year. So in 2025, the maximum out-of-pocket maximum for an individual is $9,200, and for a family, it's $18,400. And those numbers are actually down from 2024, so that's some pretty good news. But that means that basically, as an individual, your deductible could be anywhere from $1,650 to $9,200, and as a family, it could be anywhere near $3,300 to $18,400. But I'll be honest, they're probably going to be on the higher side. And this is why it's very, very important that you make sure that a high deductible health plan is actually right for your health needs. Because as great as an HSA may be, you want to make sure that your basic insurance needs are still being met. Now, if we're talking about private group health insurance as opposed to marketplace plans, very often employers offer these types of plans, HDHPs, with HSAs, and are actually willing to make contributions to your HSAs themselves. And you can think of that as an extra little bonus. It's basically like free money that they're throwing at you. Now, of course, they're not doing that just out of the goodness of their own hearts. Very often, HDHPs, or in general, plans with higher deductibles, tend to have much lower monthly premiums. And of course, under the ACA, employers with more than 50 full-time employees must provide health insurance and must contribute at least 50% towards the monthly premium. So even with their HSA contributions, they're likely saving some money there. Now, if you're self-employed or a freelancer or work for a smaller company, then you can still usually get an HSA through the marketplace if you enroll in a high deductible health plan. But pause. Again, you need to make sure that a high deductible health plan is right for you. So HDHPs are great for people with more basic or limited medical needs, people that want to have their preventative and basic services covered, and some type of out-of-pocket maximum in place to protect them from major medical bills should the worst happen. On the flip side, HDHPs can also be beneficial if you have major medical needs and you absolutely know you are going to meet that deductible really quickly. Now if you fall somewhere in between, maybe you don't have just the most limited and basic medical needs, maybe you need to see a specialist every once in a while, but you don't have a serious and chronic medical condition, or if you're somebody with small children, because as we all know, kids go to the doctor a lot, then maybe an HDHP isn't for you. If you want to learn more about marketplace plans in general, then I would highly encourage you to check out this video over here, and that'll help you determine whether an HDHP or a more traditional marketplace plan would be better for you and your family's needs. Of course, make sure to check out this playlist as well to learn all about health insurance options if you're self-employed. If you have any questions, you can reach us in the comments below or at the number on the screen. Like I said, there's no charge for our services, and of course, we are licensed nationwide. And before you go, please don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.